Thanks so much for the for the introduction, and I'm I'm also really happy to to be here. So Ista, uh, Cecilia, um, and I think for both of us, it always feels like coming home if it involves TCBL, because of course TCBL, yeah. the TCBL project is actually the project that gave yeah. us the opportunity to also set up the Textile Lab. We're part of a bigger organization, um, BAG, which is a research institute for art, um, science, and um, and technology. And um, within this organization, we set up the, the, the lab a few, five years ago, more than five years ago. And uh, we, we also have a picture of the building because it's, it's actually a really old building um, in the middle of, of Amsterdam. So we are really fortunate to actually have this kind of, we always say we have the, the lab in, in our castle. Uh, we have around 75 colleagues, something yeah. like that for research fields, uh, more than Here 10 research lab so the the second slide please <laughs> yay here we are yeah so we are one of <laughs> these 10 uh research labs so as i was saying already more than five years ago we set up the um, the textile lab uh, we had this opening in september uh, a lot of the tcbl uh, partners were already uh, were also there in the um, in the waag um, and if we just have a close look also at our team. So we started with the two of us. Uh, we are now with five people by now. And we all have a background more or less in, in fashion or textiles and design. So we all have a kind of different approach, I think, to um, the projects we work on, um, the, the, the topics we work on, which makes it also interesting because we can question yeah. actually all the, the research we do and the projects from very different um, perspectives. And of course, all around us, there is a, a home, yeah, a much bigger team also within May Group, um, our working group, colleagues that also work on art science and on AI and on biotechnology that also feeds very much uh, all of our work and interconnects with that. Yeah, it, it's, it's really a, a luxury because sometimes, I mean, we hit a lot of different topics, which we'll see a bit later, but we can only do that because we have such an interdisciplinary team and so many also artists in residence passing by, uh, scientists working with us. So, um, yeah, that, I think that's very important to, to mention. Next slide, please. So what do we do, actually? <laughs> so, of course, we work on the same topics as were mentioned uh, before. Um, the textile industry worldwide, very complex, completely connected uh, with uh, global, local components. Uh, and, and we kind of started off with how can we make this better? Where do we start? So um, we, we experiment, with, experiment with knowledge coming from craftsmanship, because we always say a lot of things are actually already there, but we just forgotten about it. Uh, so with the heritage, also technology in a very broad sense, uh, digital fabrication, we have a fab lab, bio labs, also biotechnology. And we believe <laughs> uh, in collaboration and transparency because we cannot build the new next big system. So we need to be transparent about how we question what we do, um, how we do the research. And how we do it together, really creating a sort of collective intelligence, because I think also how both Mark and... Um, Becca earlier mentioned, and also Jesse, of course, we, the textile industry, textiles are everywhere, and the textile industry is actually made up by so many small SMEs, and we need to bring all of these together to, to do our work and actually balance out together to create a bigger picture. And, it, and it's always nice because sometimes we still hear people saying like, ah, textiles, clothes, man, not my cup of tea. But uh, of course, y we all get dressed in the morning. We sleep at night underneath the, 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 the sheets. Uh, if we drive our car, we're sitting actually also on, on, on textiles. So um, everybody is involved in this industry, which also makes it quite an interesting one to, to also have an impact. Next slide, please. So... We do this really, we try to do this every time more and more in a holistic approach, value-driven and embodied. And we say an approach that is personal, that cares, because sometimes we do miss this um, in a more traditional textile industry. And we think that this is so important also to really support each other. And this is why we work always in such a networked way. And when we say network, we really mean collaborative. Um, so... 
we do this by with a research methodology that we've been developing in the last five years that tackles uh, the research questions through five entry points that we will be looking at right now. And these are materials, tools, processes, systems, and culture. Next slide, please. And <laughs> yes, you can laugh with us. This is a little bit uh, how a research methodology looks like. And it's voluntarily looking like a UFO that glitters at night because we do think that if we do this, we also need to have this joyful approach and also explorative where mistakes don't fully exist anymore, but we experiment and try to find together new solutions. And if somehow this image also reminded you of something else, next slide, please. You might think of something like this. And yes, we, we wonder what, what is a holistic approach and how does it touch upon everything we do as human beings and being humane and living in sync with everything that is around us, not only people, but also organisms, cities, nature all around us and all of the landscapes with us. Because this is, of course, also a, a system to, to look at the energy. So I, I think this is also a constant. Um, the methodology is in, 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 in process um, and always. So if you have an idea also for a sixth or seven or eight layer, um, <laughs> let's see what we have in two years. I don't know, next year. Next slide. So these are our research lens, lenses, as we mentioned. They, they really work as entry points. And of course, we start with materials because, as it was said also in the pre previous presentations, materials are everywhere. They're so much the start of what we do. And often we just think, oh, I'm going to design this and I think I need a material like that. And we go and look for a material. But materials, again, are all around us. We can craft them. We can research about them. We can look at what is abundant locally and actually lean on those that knowledge to actually create new opportunities. And the same way with tools, when new materials come, new tools and new processes, but also new ways of teaching and training and transferring knowledge, because we see those also really as processes and systems trying to tackle infrastructures also to much, much larger scale to then, of course, culminate in what for us, I think, is also the most important bit somehow, a sort of culture change, a mindset change, an approach change. Uh, to the way we deal with textiles, to the way we love and hate textiles and how we can make it again something that we're so comfortable and happy with. Next slide, please. Each of these research lenses actually expands on three further layers that we will be looking at. We call these layers strategies or modus operandi because they really tackle the approach with which we do projects. Next, please. So a research lens, as we said, is our entry point. The second layer is what we do with our peers, with other researchers, and it is to explore and research. It's very in-depth and hands-on. The knowledge exchange part is what we do much more with networks, where we explore back and forth how we can do things differently together and bounce off ideas of each other. To then do what we call release, which involves very much releasing information also in an op fully open source fashion, because everything we do at Textile Lab Amsterdam is open source. We always try to document everything, even all of our mistakes, because as said earlier, we don't truly really believe there are mistakes. There are sometimes unexpected outcomes uh, that actually give us the possibility to reflect again. And we want to do that with our communities, also to understand how we can further facilitate them, support them, enable them, but also what do, so what do they need from us, but also what can we offer in the meanwhile for them to create constantly new opportunities and new, new choices? Because at the end, we think that textile is very much also about making choices and making them together. And I think it's also important to mention that also in our work and the research questions we have with the projects, we always need to kind of jump in these different uh, from strategy. So if we only make, um, it's limited because we don't know how it relates to our peers or our networks or communities. If we only work with the communities, we kind of lose the understanding of the research uh, and, and the material we're, we're talking about. So we always need to make sure the projects go kind of back and forth to understand what we're doing. Also to really create these new narratives. And these uh, come together, next slide please, into our research methodology. And next again, we will start with um, three example projects. The first one, as Jesse mentioned, I think you can click, uh, is TCB. 
TCBL, Textile and Clothing Business Labs, because for us it was also really the start of everything somehow, the formalization of a lot of activities, a lot of research that were happening at VAG and also in our previous works, coming together in a, in a much more holistic way also to explore how can we design a future that is different. Next. So we did this, uh, also as Jesse mentioned, starting in TCBL, coordinating also uh, the labs, exploring what a lab is and how do we also um, differ from each other in all these different labs, because we see that in networks, the most important thing is actually creating also complementary networks that can feed each other, that support each other, that builds upon each other's knowledge. Um, and the principles, of course, were really at the core of all of this, because working in a value-driven way, you can bring together these uh, complementary networks. Next. We would love to zoom in in Bioshades. Bioshades, I think, uh, was, at least for myself, really the favorite piece. I'm sorry to put it this way. Um, it was an amazing research. It was an amazing uh, journey, I have to say. Together with other labs involved uh, in TCBL, we explored materials, processes, tools to create a change of culture. So tackling the, the five lenses in a slightly different way, in a more hands-on way, we really explored with materials. We created what we call now a lab-to-lab -lab project. So how do we research together with others and then let it culminate into a distributed campaign where all different labs can actually participate, learn at the, at the moment, like what they're going to be teaching to others and transfer this knowledge further and further. Next slide. So the, the outcomes here really for us, this distributed research, because this little picture of the bacteria you see is one of our first uh, double dyed Petri dishes. So we also really love to do the things ourselves, open up, demystify the technology, look at biotech and say, okay, is this really as big and complex as it looks like? Or is this something we can break down into understandable little bits to, to take it a step further to open opportunities to others? And of course, all of this is documented uh, in an open source fashion with videos and movies and tutorials, but also booklets, so that we create a sort of uh, mutual literacy as well between scientists and designers, because very often we see designers have a lot of questions, a lot of problems in textiles that actually maybe a scientist coming for, or a technologist coming from a completely different field can actually answer very easily. But bringing these two together, sometimes there is a need for, for, for exploring language in a different way, protocols next to um, design processes to then feed this collaborative knowledge networks work in well what today is reality what we called hybrid learning uh in 2018 <laughs> was not the normality so we organized this first distributed hands-on live hybrid workshop um, where the participants were learning with us uh, on the go um and then of course did a lot of also exhibitions and other publications a way to create awareness that this is possible. And we still see a beautiful, I think, uh, ripple effect of, uh, of Bioshades and all the people involved in this project because we were really a very, very large team. Yeah, and I, I remember also during this distributed uh, workshop that we did then for the first time, it was so much fun also with all the other instructors in the lab. So it was kind of held and guided um, at WAG, but also the other ones guiding their local teams. And we had this WhatsApp group uh, weeks before also to prepare <laughs> and all dealing with completely different uh, problems. One country was much hotter, which had an effect also on the growth of the bacteria or more humid. Uh, so also the solutions people came up with. It was so interesting to also be able to kind of learn from each other while having fun, uh, trying stuff out, and also then um, uh, teaching that to the to our local uh, students, let's say. Um, so I think that's also what the next project really shows, that we always have this uh, global and, and local component, so really learning from each other uh, globally, working together, but executing uh, and, and making it fit your own um, uh, local community or your local... Context. Yeah, local context. So Reflow uh, is really, it's still running. It's really a project um, executed in six different uh, cities in, in Europe. And uh, each city looks at another uh, resource, let's say, or, or waste stream. 
um, and to see if we can kind of bring it back into the loop to really uh, work towards a circular city and circular economy. So right. Amsterdam, of course, uh, focused on, on textiles, luckily. And I think we just started to, to question with our local partners, also the municipality, um, and we also work with, uh, with Metabolic. So kind of, okay, there is so much textiles going to waste. How can we make sure it's not linear, but circular? How is it actually possible? Where does it go? What, what are the opportunities? So what Metabolic did, did is really mapping out the urban textile flow. Um, from that uh, mapping, let's say we analyzed, okay, where are actually the gaps? Where need to, do we need to uh, maybe Intervene. yeah have an intervention and really make it circular? So with these local partners, also very technical partners, PMA Tecna, um, we developed the vision for the municipality. So next slide. To go from this linear way stream to a circular one. But this, of course, this is the ideal. Also with thinking of 2030, 2050 in mind. Um, and of course, I mean, this is fully round. You always have a little bit of waste at some point. Um, and from here, we kind of mapped where we need to intervene first to make this happen. Next slide. So we had a few... Um, next slide. No, yeah, clicks. <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah. Thank you. So one of them was, of course, okay, uh, there needs to be discarded less and correctly, because a lot of the, the, the textile goes in a normal bin instead of the textile bin, only 5% or something like that ends up there. So something about awareness uh, that, that citizens really know what to do with it. But also there is no education in, in circularity. So that's also a very important one. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think also, I mean, we really started also from the citizens because what we started to realize is that um, we needed to increase the amount of collected textiles because the industry was clearly also informing us that uh, there is not enough to be recycled. So in order to also see how we could bring everybody back together, we needed to decrease the use of virgin fibers and increase the, the recycled feedstock so that the industry had also something to process here uh, in the region and nationally. Yeah, And this fed also um, actions like the... Um, the denim deal uh, and the third the green deals that the um, region of Amsterdam is working on. Yeah, and also to really work towards new new business models that there are the, the correct incentives actually for this industry to start working uh, with these uh, collected uh, textiles. And of course, as you were saying, next slide. We don't do this together because circular economy is impossible together. <laughs> Yeah, it's we we need all the actors on the same page with the same values towards the same uh, goals, let's say. And also to find really a way of understanding together what are circular heroes, because it's people all around us all day. Tailors repairing garments. For example, we, there has been um, this year very, very uh, good activity in Reflo, which was uh, connected to the City Pass also offering people to repair their own garments for free if they had a city pass and they could go to all of the subscribed tailors. This brings together the tailors back to the citizen. People will start keeping the garments hopefully longer. And everybody's really, really excited of this uh, specific action because it's really working and really seems to have an effect. Yeah, and I think this is something that comes back often in our work to kind of value everybody in this ecosystem uh, or in this uh, the circle in this case, because still in this industry, of course, we, th there are certain professions um, that are valued um, more than others, which is, of course, really strange because we need them. We need them all. Next slide. Last but not least, we would love to introduce you in to Fabricademy. Textile and Technology Academy. It's a program um, co-founded with uh, Anastasia Pistofido, who is also uh, one of the TCBL labs and one of the She Makes lab that I think is a project that will be spoken about more in the next TCBL days. Um, and Fabric Academy really aims to create a transdisciplinary distributed education that puts all of this uh, principles and practices and opening up of technologies into practice with participants all over the world. And when I say all over the world, next slide, please. You see that actually we have um, about 40 labs. They're really scattered all over the place. Um, new ones are joining every year. Some are really becoming more and more established. And what we see is that, again, we are working in a completely distributed 
almost microwave because we believe in globally collected, connected and locally active uh, small laboratories that can actually really become part of the, um, of the weave of a city and of uh, the region and then empower their, their areas and local contexts. Next slide. Just very quickly, three lovely projects of some of our participants to give you more of a feel. Of course, in Fabric Academy, we tackle technology, we tackle biotech. We, it's about the mindset, the approach. It's about learning together. Everything is open source. So also all these projects of the participants you will see now, you can find all of the information, all of their file um, online. And this is a way for us to create knowledge pools also with our participants. This is uh, one of our Amsterdam students, Sara Alvarez from last year. She created beautifully handcrafted, digitally fabricated and digitally designed parametric shoes that are mono material. They are 3D printed. Um, it's DPE, it can be recycled uh, and you can actually ideally throw the entire sh sh uh, shoe into a shredding bin and start over, create small pallets and print a new pair of shoes. So also participants are really trying to create and give shape to this um, circular principles um, that we practice. Bringing together craftsmanship and technology on one side and on another side, also exploring very artistic uh, approaches where we explore how far technology can take us, but also how close can it take us back to nature or can it take us back to nature? And how do we bring these two worlds much closer to us? Because at the end, as humans, we, we're both, we create the technology and we are nature. So how can these two create this symbiotic relationship around us on our bodies? And what does this mean? And this is a beautiful project of Kate Reed in Boston. Last but not least, we have in the next slide, Teresa van Twijfer, who is a local Amsterdam artist. She does amazing work in actually really from the tradition, from the craftsmanship, but also the new technologies, bridging everything back together to create beautiful narratives. They're almost movies, entire stories where um, the garment has such an important function. Uh, this is, for example, a sleep warrior and everything is connected back to us as human beings and how we connect, uh, how we connect, how we are in sync with nature and how do we bring that back. Um, and he was really addressing actually the lack of sleep that the world has and uh, wondering if we would all sleep a couple of hours more, if we will be a little bit happier and sweeter and better with each other. And I think we have our last slide. Um, click please, which, brings it all together because again while while working on this we every time we realize it's about networks for us it's about the people it's this humane aspect and how can we all value each other how can we complement each other yeah um, and because that's also our approach sort of like same vision same goal but coming from two different sides to yeah. to feed each other and I think as Jesse was started, of course, already, I mean, I remember often we had the discussion within TCBL really at the start, like, okay, do we need to change the big players or can we actually connect all the smaller players? And I think that is really what we, what we try to do and to keep, yeah, keep questioning constantly. Because if you work on a material, you change the way you work. If you change the way you work, you also has an effect on, on the material or the tools. So it's a, a constant going back and forth. Uh, I mean, culture creates systems any other way around. So I think... Yeah, it's kind yeah. of scaling up the discussion we have constantly <laughs> <laughs> and the questions. And it is jumping between back and forth uh, <clears throat> with the main question. Are, are we working towards circularity? How do we get there? Can we get there? And I think we debate every year. It's different. It's one year we, we can. And 10 minutes later, we're like, can we really? But this discussion is what is needed to get people on board, to be comfortable to make it happen and together. also to make it fun today because <laughs> often it's about the future which is kind of it has a risk of postponing solutions but it's also really about today so yeah thanks a lot <laughs>